So there are a few things that I want to say. The first one is that there are a few things that I want to say. The first one there is a there's going to be a free tournament in this amount of time and it's not a lot of money, so I'm debating whether or not I'm going to play, but I think I'm going to play. So I'm going to be here I think only for 1 hour approximately or maybe more and then as you get close to the to this point I'm going to see if I'm going to play or, or not the the tournament. The other thing is that I think I'm going to stop streaming on Twitch and I'm going to stream on YouTube because it's better uh for small content creators. Like I said many times and I, I don't know if I want to be famous. I don't I don't know if I want the attention but I definitely want to make money and I think social media is a good way to do that. So eventually at some point I might uh, start making videos to gain viewers. So teaching people stuff, adding value. I'm not sure about that either, depending on what's going to happen, obviously, and whether or not I make money on different ways. The main thing that, that makes me want to get viewers is if I want to deploy something or create a website or a software, having a bunch of viewers is the easiest way to get the first users. That's the main thing, the main reason why I would want to do that. But uh, yeah, I haven't said that. I think YouTube is better for growing as a small content creator. And that's one of the reasons and it seems like Twitch is kind of dying. So I think I'm going to move on to YouTube. And the other reason why uh, I want to do that is because I think it's going to be easier because I just realized that I'm streaming, I'm live streaming on Twitch. And then right after that, I'm uploading the video directly to YouTube. So it might be just easier to stream on YouTube and then the video is probably going to be up uh, after the, I stream. So it's just more convenient as well. The other thing that I want to say is that I got back into poker to play, uh, got back into playing so I can could get the money to get the hardware, which I, I did already, is going to arrive next month for uh, getting all the data from the blockchain, from Ethereum. And uh, because I, I got back, I realized, and I thought it was, I was looking at the, I was thinking about this, about poker, and then I was looking at the old stuff that I had. And then I thought about uh, why not just get all the hand histories that I have and try to create something to analyze my hand with histories and to uh, see wh what my weak points are. And I, I just think it's interesting in general, it's going to help me as well to play poker better and it might be something good to do on stream while I work on other stuff off stream. So next time it's probably going to take, it's probably going to take me a while to stream again because I'm going to have to figure out how to set up uh, everything for YouTube, the OBS and that kind of stuff. And I'm really busy with all the other stuff that I'm doing off stream as well and studying a bunch of stuff. But yeah, I think I'm going to do that and I'm, I'm debating whether or not to do this on Rust or, or Python. And I think, I think I'm going to end up doing both ways, but I'm going to try to start with Rust. And then if it's too hard, then I'll move on to uh, doing with Python. But the idea I think is going to be, I have a bunch of hands here. I think there's probably more than uh, 300,000 hands that I played. I don't think, I'm not sure if I'm going to do, if I'm going to show anything about the hand histories on stream, but I think I'm going to develop everything on stream. And then when it gets time to actually analyze the, the hands, then I'll do this off stream. But at least the whole setup of the idea that I have right now, th that's the other thing, because I don't know how hard it's going to be. There's this program called BioSolver, which everyone that's the place poker uses, which is essentially allows you to create simulations of hands and get the game theoret theoretical optimal approach. And it also allow allows you to node lock a strategy, which means that you fixed a certain strategy and this, then you resolve the solver and it shows the optimal approach against the strategy that you selected. 
and that's very useful if you want to exploit opponents because obviously nobody plays GTO and the money from poker comes from uh, deviating from GTO in the correct way in opposite way of your opponents so that you can extract the most amount of value and what I'm thinking about doing is getting the, the whole hand histories that I have here parsing first parsing the, the hands in a way uh, that I understand so flop, turn and river and different lines so playing around with that idea that's the first thing and then after I do that I'm gonna see if it's possible because I remember trying to do this in the very beginning when, when I was starting to learn how to code but I didn't know anything about coding obviously so I thought it was too hard or I was just wasting time because I had a lot of other stuff to do so I don't I'm not sure uh, if it's gonna be possible to interact with this bio solver through the commands but my idea is to use Rust and interact with PyoSolver and my hand history to create something that allows me to see my leaks so pretty much create a bunch of simulations based on my hand history and my opponents and then create simulations by locking their strategy and mine and then yeah basically I don't think I'm gonna spend any time studying uh, the simulations because I don't have time but I think I'm gonna try to extract the the percentages for example uh you're folding 10 percent more than you should on the river something like that or you're not bluffing enough something like that uh, basically what things i can do and uh, percentage wise to make more money playing because even though i'm winning at the stakes that i play which are not very high that i'm playing right now is 25 and all uh, I definitely know that I can play much better and make more, so. But the only caveat to this is that I I'm not sure if it's going to be possible to interact with this and in the way that I'm thinking. Yeah, let me see. Also have different hands here. I think, yeah, this is the recent ones that I just got then this is a data set from Kaggle I don't think I'm gonna use this I think I'm gonna delete this actually because this is a bunch of files from GG poker from a while ago Yeah, so basically it's gonna be a lot of string manipulation in the first part and then trying to make sense of the string manipulation to see the stats so bad amount I have to see I'm thinking about if I'm gonna because uh, I remember these files were, were all named the same thing and there was a command that I used to put them all together maybe I still have the, the command somewhere or maybe I delete it I think it's on the, com on the yeah, command line using percentage and then just appending one file to the other. I might do that. <laughs> yeah, the other thing that I, I don't think this data set is going to be big enough to be concerned about optimization, but I, I think it's one uh, thing that I can do, which is study polars and as I do the try to build it with Rust, I already study how to optimize the data. Yeah, 
And this is databases. The problem is there are so many files and I can't just put them all in one thing because it's the same names. I think all of them are from Bulldog probably. <laughs> because that's the other thing that I have to see if is if they have the same form format because I'm thinking about putting them all together in one thing. And obviously if the format changes then it's not good to put them on the same file. It's gonna be easier to This seems to be the same format. I think I'm probably gonna put all of them in one folder. I wonder if we can extract all of them at the same time. I think before I do anything, I'm going to put all of the, I only want to have one level of death between them, if it's possible. Obviously, the last level is the best. I don't think it worked. Because I'm going to iterate through the folders, through the fo main folder. And maybe I should just change the name, so yeah, whatever. Fuck. It's the same name. Oh, whatever. The GG ones I'm not really curious about because they are at from 10 and now and was a time that I played a bunch of different hands. And it wasn't really...
Yeah, so I'm going to separate them into two categories, the GG and then Bulldog. And I'm probably going to focus only on the Bulldog ones. And it should be enough hands that I wouldn't be able to see interesting things. Obviously, I'm losing a lot of hands by doing this because a bunch of files have the same name, but I don't care about the GG ones. Moving one by one. I think I'm gonna delete this once. Probably easier. Oh, I remember that there is a difference in the formatting when you have the whole cards, yeah. There's also a difference here. I think I'm just going to remove this one so it's easier.
I don't want to spend a bunch of time doing this. And if it's too hard, I'm probably going to stop and do something else. I'm just doing this because I think it's interesting and it might help me. Uh, it's a goal that I can achieve multiple things at the same time. So the whole car is, I think, is interesting. Spoke stars as well. Down. I'm gonna rename them so it's easier. And I'm gonna quote stuff. Oh, maybe, yeah. So I think this is already all, all hands. So I think I'm gonna uh, delete this thing. And I'm only gonna put this one. It's fine if I delete some uh, that are not repeated. Because I don't it's, it's going to be enough hands, I think, to get some statistical relevance. Probably more than 200,000, 300,000, so it doesn't matter that much. Ah, oh, fuck. I think I should I delete this once. I think I'm gonna delete them. I move this one. There are probably some repeated ones as well there.
Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is convert this, all of these ends into one file and then get rid of all the folders. The only issue I have with Rust is that maybe it's because of lack of experience, but I have to create a different project for each thing that I, I want to do. I don't know how to, how to structure things in a way that I can run scripts on Rust or do one thing at a time. And then because you have to run main uh, all the time, I think what you have to do is create different packages and or different modules and then create uh, import those modules on the main file and then run each one at a time to see. So maybe that's what I'm going to do. And I'm thinking about this now because I don't know what to name this. If I'm going to do two different projects, one to structure the hands and the other one to uh, to connect it with BioServer. I think I'm just going to leave it like this. Now let me think. Maybe actually, yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. Because this way I can just loop through the folder, loop through this folder and then through each folder I append into a single file. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to search everything because I don't know how to do anything with Rust.
no, each each one is an entry there. And maybe if I just pass entry. There we go. Yeah, obviously it's probably not the best, but whatever. This is not the most important thing. So for each one of these files, I'm gonna... Oh, actually, let me see. File.path. For each one of these files, I'm going to open the file and then I'm going to append to the other ones. I think it's just file to open the file, but I'm still going to search because I don't know. Maybe like this. It uh, depends for. Or something like this.
not sure if it is required. I remember reading last time I did this that you didn't need. You didn't need to put read and write if you put your pen, but not really sure. I think I'm going to do the, the Italian thing and then I'll look into that as I do the Italian stuff. Because I remember I, I did this. But I used the CSV writer. We didn't write the file. Yeah, whatever. Io. Io. I. Il suo. Il suo. His. Che. Che. That. Lui. Lui. He. Era. Era. He. She was. Per. Per. For. Su. Su. On. Come. Come. As. Like. Con. Con. With. Loro. Loro. They. Essere. Essere. To be. A. A. At. Uno. Uno. One. Avere. Avere. To have. 
Questo. Questo. This. Da. Da. From. Di. Di. Fai. Caldo. Caldo. Hot. Parola. Parola. Word. Ma. Ma. But. Cosa. Cosa. What. Alcuni. Alcuni. Some. È. È. Is. Quello. Quello. That. Voi. Voi. You. Place. O. Oh. O. Oh. Or. Aveva. Aveva. Had. Il. Il. The. Di. Di. Of. A. A. To. E. E. And. Un. Un. A. In. 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 Noi. Noi. We. Latina. Latina. Can of soda. Fuori. Fuori. Out. Altro. Altro. Other. Erano. Erano. Were. Che quale. Che quale. Which. Fare. Fare. To do. Make. Loro. Loro. There. Tempo. Tempo. Time. Se. Se. If. Volontà. Volontà. Will. Come. Come. How. Detto. Detto. Said. Un. Un. An. Ogni. Ogni. Each. Dire. Dire. Tell. That wasn't very helpful for the poker stuff. I think to open, obviously, I'm going to use the same thing. Uh, no. Also, should probably put uh, this stuff here results. I think it's okay in the response. Something like this. Yeah, completely off. And then I should make all these calls have the question mark. It's not and it should return a result at the end. Oh okay. At the end of the file of the function.
I think maybe what I have to do is loop through the file and then append to the other one as a loop. Maybe that's very inefficient, but probably and maybe it works even though it's inefficient. I actually think I'm going to change this to the options. Yeah, because these options are probably, uh, they probably only work if I use this one. I'm gonna try this approach first before looping. Try to loop. The issue is I don't wanna write as bytes, that's the problem. And just try to run and see what happens.
Let me open the Italian thing again. Just see how I did it that time. I understand what's wrong there, but I'm just curious. Open you. Fuck. I forgot. So. I know that I, I think it's this. Shouldn't have closed. I think I'm just gonna open again to see if it is cracked. Yeah, open you. Also don't understand why I'm using the the borrow there, but I think it's unnecessary. So one alternative is, I think I'm just going to go back to this. One alternative is to try like this, to open with the file. The other one is going to be to use the, the same way that I did here, but then change the path and pass the path. First, it told me that I wasn't using, and now
wonder if I can do this now. Okay, so the, the dot makes this a file. So I think I'm going to have to loop through this file and then write it like that. But the thing I don't understand is how is it going to append to the, the previous one? Because if they are connected, then this, this is a problem. There needs to be a space between each file. I know there is a script as well, like I said before, to connect files, but I'm doing like this so I can practice Rust. Maybe the other thing I could do is loop to the files and then use the commands, the command line. I think yes, I'm pretty sure it's possible to use the the system output and input to pass arguments to command line and then run the script to join the files. That's another approach, I think, I guess. Oh, there is an append. Oh, but th that's the option. Oh, what if I do unwrap here as well? Maybe that will work. I guess I'll try to do the way that I'm thinking about it, and then I search later if I if the way that I'm thinking doesn't work. Oh yeah, the, that's true.
And if the approach that I that I thinking about doesn't work, then I'm gonna try to search for the command on Windows to join the files, and then try gonna try to use Rust to call the commands on each one as I look through the the thing. Maybe just write is easier. That's is better actually. I don't remember. I'll ha probably have go I'm gonna have to look at the other project again. Yeah. How did I do this? Well, that's really useful.
if you don't need to loop, I can just write. Because it's expecting a binary. I don't understand why I put this thing here. I try first without this and then if it doesn't work I'll try again. I know there's a problem, another problem there, but What the hell? I have the file here. I'm using the buff reader. String new.
It's probably because the hand is not a file. Let me delete this and put the like this. It's probably gonna work if I do it like this. I'm gonna go to the bathroom and right back. There's definitely resistance charts doing this with us because I don't, I'm not very used, I'm not used at all to the language. So it's really exhausting, but I think that's a good thing because it means that I'm getting out of my comfort zone and that's when you, you grow. So it's probably a good thing to do this on Rust, even though it's kind of annoying and I get tired really fast. Because it's just thinking about all the other stuff uh, that I have probably gonna have to figure out to to build this thing, but maybe it's not that difficult actually. But it is annoying because of the string manipulation. It's a lot harder to do the string manipulation in Rust, and also the borrow uh, stuff and dealing with objects. I don't know the libraries as well and how to when to create structs and things like that. So it looks like the file should be. The biggest problem here is that I think the formatting is going to be off. Hopefully it isn't. Damn. I can't open it with OpenOffice, so I think I'm going to have to restart with a different configuration it's a massive file maybe i'm i am gonna have to do some kind of optimization with rust use polars or something like that or see study the source code of polars and then try to replicate something like that in rust and then save to h5 format instead of the csv which is faster because i, I didn't realize but i wasn't thinking because i was thinking it's probably at most 
It's definitely less than 1 million hands, I, I would say. So... Damn. Yeah, that sucks. So... Now what I was thinking about? Oh yeah, so since I, uh, it's definitely less than 1 million hands, I... I made the equivalence in my mind that it's gonna be like a CSV that has less than 1 million rows and that it, even though it's big, it's not that big but it actually might be different because obviously uh, each file is not equivalent to a hand uh, each, each hand is not equivalent to a row so it might be more than that so it might, if I translate stuff into a CSV it might get very big but yeah, the other thing here that I have to do is to separate this into module, modules and, and just realize that because it did everything on the main file. So I'm going to study the, how to do that. Uh, And it's gonna give it any name. Because the idea, hopefully, I can make everything on this only one project. I don't like creating a bunch of different projects. Projects. And that's the thing that I like about Python, actually, is that you can just create this script and run it. Actually, it's better if I copy everything. Maybe it's just, oops. Control C. And then I just change the name. I'm going to use the ex extension here. The rest programming language separating modules into different files. So far, all the examples in this chapter defined multiple modules in one file. So far, so far, all the examples in this chapter defined multiple modules in one file. When modules get large, you might want to move their definitions to a separate file to make the code easier to navigate. For example, let's start from a coding listing 7 to 17 that had multiple abstract modules. We we'll abstract modules into files instead of having all modules defined in a crate root file. In this case, the crate root file is src slash libgrs, but this procedure also works with binary crates whose crate root file is src slash mainrs. First, we'll extract the front of house module to its own file. Remove the code inside the curly brackets for the front of house module, leaving only the mod front of house declaration so that src slash libgrs contains the code shown in listing 7 21. Note that this won't compile until we create the src slash front of house .rs file in listing 7 22. File name src slash libgrs. Mod front of house pub use crate front of house hosting pub fne the restaurant hosting add to wait list. Mod front of house pub use crate front of house hosting pub fne the restaurant hosting add to it list. Listing 7 to 21, declaring the front of house module whose body will be in src slash front of house .rs. Next, place the code that was in the curly brackets into a new file named src slash front of house .rs, as shown in listing 7 to 22. The compiler knows to look in this file because it came across the module declaration in the crate root with the name front of house. File name, src slash front of house .rs. Pub mod hosting pub fn. I think all I have to do is kind of like JavaScript in a way, I think. So you create the functions and then you create the module and it's, it's like you're exporting the module. I want to use join, but it, I'm concerned that it might be a function from some somewhere else, and then it's gonna make things more confusing. So I just I'm just gonna put join files. Mm. 
What is what's the it doesn't go back? What happened? Damn, it's not uh, going back to the other mode. Whatever. Well, seems like I don't need a semicolon here. Note that you only need to load a file using a mod declaration once in your module tree. Once the compiler knows the file is part of the project and knows where in the module tree the code resides because of where you put the mod statement. Other files in your project should refer to the loaded files. Co remove the code inside the curly first. We'll extract the front off house module to its own file. Remove the code inside the curly brackets for the front off house module, leaving only the mod front off house declaration so that SRC slash libars contains the code shown in listing 7 to 21. Note that this won't compile until we create the SRC slash front off house .rs file in listing 7 to 22. File name SRC slash libars. Mod front off house, pub use create front off house hosting, pub fne the restaurant, hosting add to it list. Listing 7 to 21, declaring the front off house module whose body will be in src slash front off house .rs. Next, place the code that was in the curly brackets into a new file. Yeah, maybe when you crashed the VS code, something happened with the, with Vim. But I don't know. I'll look into that later. And now this is confusing as fuck. Because now I don't know if I should put the function, this function in this file or the other one. I assume that the, the way that it makes sense, more sense for me is put the code here and just use the lib to route everything. But I'm not sure if that's correct or not. I think you wanna watch videos on that. It's close to the time uh, that the tournament is gonna start and I'm already really tired. So I think I'm gonna stop here, yeah. I'm gonna stop here and watch videos about this. I'm gonna do this off stream uh, on how to organize things so that uh, I can build everything on this project. But next step, uh, the the first thing that I wanted to do right after this that I was gonna do now, and then I realized uh, that I did things in uh, the wrong way, is um, is create a script or a file to read this all hands file here, the characters in the file and to see if the formatting is correct because that's the main concern that I have. And because I can't open this file on Windows and on VS Code then it's obviously a problem. Because if the formatting is incorrect then I'm gonna have problems when I'm... Maybe it's not that big of a deal because I'm probably gonna use regex to... Uh, yeah, the plan that I have is I'm gonna look at the files manually first and then the, then I'm going to see the key points and the things that I want to extract from each hand. Then I'm going to create regex or search for regex because I hate doing regex and it's easier to search for. So I'm going to search for regex and I'm going to probably loop through the file with all the hands and select the patterns that I want. And with that I'm going to extract, I'm going to put probably into a struct or a trait or something like that. Uh, the things that I want 
and probably translate that into a CSV or something like that or put on a file, probably a CSV. And then I'll probably study polars as well or other CSV, um, how to deal with CSVs in Rust because that's also going to be useful for when the data, when the hardware arrives and they have the, and I'm start building my own nodes in Ethereum. Or I'm not sure if I'm going to build my own node or I'm going to put the information on CSV. But either way, I think it's going to be very beneficial to study ways to read the data and manipulate the data in a much faster way than using CSV with pandas, which uh, from the past I already know that it's not pra practical, practical for the amount of data that I'm going to have. So I think this is going to be a good... Uh, way to bridge the, the two things that I'm doing here. So I'm going to study how to do that with Rust and uh, after I have the, all this information on the file, then I'm going to study the BioSolver language here and I'm going to see if I can create scripts in Rust that format everything in this way so that I can connect BioSolver with the my hand histories and create simulations based on that. And then the bi most important thing is not even the simulations, but it's getting the percentages. That's what I'm interested about. And I remember that running simulations with BioSolver takes a very long time, especially if you do it with a lot of bad sizes, it increases exponentially because of the size of the game tree. So that's probably going to take a long time. But that's, and I'm probably going to do a bunch of, of this stuff off stream as well. Uh, not only on stream because it's just easier to use the two monitors. And I'm probably going to take a long time to stream because I'm going to have to study how to set up everything for YouTube instead of Twitch next time. So, but that's the stuff that I'm going to be doing. And I'm also working on some other stuff off stream uh, related to Ethereum as well. So, I'm not sure when I'm going to come back. It's probably going to take some time, but yeah. And uh, next time I'm probably going to continue to do this or continue, continue to do this and study the CSV and the polars and all the other stuff. So see you then.